There are still a lot of unanswered questions about this attack, um, but starting, let's start with you trying to give us a little bit of historical context for how this fits into a continuum of behavior, things that we've seen in Europe uh, previously. Well, you're absolutely right that there's a lot we don't know, and in fact, uh, the discontinuities are more impressive here. France has been extremely fortunate, but also very aggressive in its police work and its intelligence, and hasn't had a serious uh, uh, terrorist attack in more than two decades. And the fact that this has happened now is obviously uh, a pretty remarkable event. Uh, we have seen around the world, not just in Europe, uh, a rising uh, tide, a rising uh, incidence of uh, attacks by self-starters, by homegrown extremists who seem to want to act up uh, because primarily of the success of ISIS in Iraq uh, and Syria. At the same time, we don't know if that uh, is the link here, whether these are self-starters. They certainly seem proficient with weapons, which would make you think that they're not self-starters. Uh, there was one wire report that suggested that they may have had to do with al-Qaeda in Yemen. So there are a huge number of question marks right now. Um, it's certainly a period of high tension uh, in Europe and a lot of concern about returning foreign fighters. Uh, but there's just too much that we uh, don't know right now. Based on what we do know, uh, given this event, in France, in the United States, what's the appropriate government response not to deal with these particular terrorists, but with the overall threat of targets and, and policy? Uh, so there are two tracks that uh, need to be pursued. One is the intelligence and law enforcement effort to uh, find these, uh, apprehend the, the killers themselves, uh, and uh, find out you know, where they came from, uh, who they're connected with, uh, where the uh, hole in, our, in, in the homeland security systems uh, might be, particularly in France and in the larger Schengen group in, in Europe. Um, but the other uh, thing that is absolutely essential is to not let this get out of hand. Now, in, in Europe right now, uh, there's a tremendous amount of anti-immigration sentiment. Uh, it's been all over the newspapers, uh, marches in Dresden, uh, anti-immigration sentiment in, in the UK, uh, highlighted by the new uh, party UKIP. And uh, there's a, uh, a, an awful lot of the same in, in France. And uh, the danger here is that uh, we see ever greater confrontations, provocations and the like, and that will drive radicalization, and that is precisely what we don't want. And that is uh, a very difficult thing uh, for uh, the authorities to manage, uh, but they really need to speak calmly and clearly to the public uh, about this and recognize that uh, whoever did this, uh, they represent a very, very small minority of the Muslim community uh, in France, which is, of course, the largest in Europe. Dan, if you, you've been inside the U.S. government and, and dealing with these kinds of issues in the past, what are the, the most pressing questions that the United States government right now needs the answers to uh, as soon as possible? Well, the most pressing uh, ans uh, question, first of all, is where are they? And second of all is, uh, what is the phenomenon we're looking at? Are the, is this someone who infiltrated from uh, perhaps Yemen? Is this uh, someone who came from, uh, you know, the depressed suburbs of Paris? Is there a relationship here with ISIS? Is this, uh, you know, we, we used to hear about the Khorasan cell, which, uh, as you recall, was the target uh, of uh, some of the first bombing attacks in Syria. Uh, it's absolutely essential that there is some kind of uh, um, assessment of where this is coming from, because we also have to know that there isn't another attack coming. I mean, that's the essence of counterterrorism is ensuring uh, that you can run the first one attack to ground so that uh, you can put aside the fear of a follow-on attack. Dan, when you say that the French are very aggressive in dealing with this, what are the hallmarks of that? Well, I think uh, it's fair to say, and, and many French officials would, uh, uh, would be quite frank, that they are not as um, assiduous about observing civil liberties as uh, uh, their neighbors in the United Kingdom, as their neighbors in Germany, and also uh, as the U.S. And uh, uh, they, their police enjoy uh, plenty of latitude uh, to go into communities and be uh, pretty forthright about uh, uh, tracking down people who uh, and harassing people. In some cases, harassment may be a bit the wrong word, but certainly making themselves known to uh, people who may be uh, showing radical uh, tendencies. 
um, very uh, aggressive surveillance uh, and the like, and, and this has contributed uh, to their success uh, over many years um, and, and certainly throughout the period that we've been dealing with jihadist violence.